Hey guys, not a whole lot been going on here in the shop. Thought I'd turn the camera around a little bit so you guys could see the machines. This is the, the most fun place to be for me. I spend my entire day, every day of the week, out here in the shop. I just love, love it. Um, so, put up some new lighting. I think you can kind of tell. So it's blinding to look at them. 6,000K, Amazon, $100. You got eight of them, they're four foot long. And boy, they light everything up, man. I can see like crazy. I am, I don't even have two of them on that's over the bench turned on. All right, so um, first up, I'll show a little clip here. Um, I've got three surface gauges. One's fine, never had to touch it. Uh, another one, I managed to lap and get it perfect. You can touch all four corners on the surface plate and the needle doesn't move. The other one, the other small one though, I could not get flat to save my life. So, um, I've always been looking for a surface grinder, but I have no place in the shop for it. I've looked for maybe luck, I would find a bench top grinder, no luck. But I have seen YouTube videos of people um, turning their mill into a surface grinder. Well, I've got a D-bit grinder and I've got lots of different cups. Made a little arbor for it, stuck it in the mill, diamond tool, cleaned it off, got it flat, put the um, surface gauge in there, upside down, ran it over it. Now in this clip, the finish you'll see is incredible. Oh, there's not much of the clip because for some reason the camera cut off. But um, yeah, bottom line is you cannot turn the mill into a surface grinder because it, I had it within a few tenths. Now it's a few thousands crooked. You touch the corner and the needle moves everywhere. So uh, unless it's just my mill, you know, mini mill, the column flexes, I don't know. But for what it's worth, here's the clip. I just have to, I'm holding the camera by hand. I have to show this. This actually works. It's a terrible wheel. It wobbles all over the place. But um, it's taking this thing flat. So I'll try to run it once, holding the camera. And I'm barely taking Z down. It's not even a foul. I'm just like slightly, oh, gee, that was a lot. Uh, how do I hold it? I made a um, tram tool a long time ago for the mill. But um, the, there's, it's a three inch vise, so I've only got so much to do it. So I wound up taking two, uh, one, two, three blocks, putting them together, clamping them in the vise, and then coming down on them to tram the mill. I've always been looking on eBay for something at least six inches long, a thick parallel, a square gauge block, something. The second you go past four inches, the price goes way through the roof, up into hundreds and hundreds. But I stumbled across this, and I'll show opening it up, and I was blown away. I think it was 80 or or $100, and it should have been well up over $800. So here it is, guys. Well, I've always kind of um, cheated a bit, I guess, to tram the mill. So I wind up putting two, one, two, three blocks like that in the vise, clamp it, hammer them down. So I've got a six inch span to tram off of, but I've always, I wanted something better. So I'm constantly looking on eBay for a six inch parallel that's thick or gauge block. The square gauge blocks cost a fortune. So anything, you get, get anything over like two inches, price jumps astronomically. I looked at, I looked at and I found this. You won't believe this. I can't believe it. How did he put it together? Oh, he did this. Evidently, it's a machinist that was retiring. We went back and forth, and he's just trying to get rid of stuff. But, wow. <clears throat> he said he was going to like triple box this thing. Jeez, what did he do? He glued it all together? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Oh, jeez. 
This is going to take a while. Oh, I didn't cut some tape. That's why. There. Okay, good. Hey, right. thanks for your purchase from Michael Mitzner or something. Cool. What is that? Priority mail to me. That's the label. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, he did the whole box it, all right. <laughs> he didn't want this thing to get damaged. Yeah. Creative guy, Bridge. A whole bunch of peanuts. I hate that, but... Uh... Dig it out. It is heavy, too. I'll tell you that. One square gauge block. Look at this thing. I think I can use that to tram the mill. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it in <laughs> the shop. All the drawers are full. Hey, I need another razor blade. This sucker isn't cutting very well. Can't believe how fast they get dull. All right. <laughs> Be careful not to cut myself here. Hey. And he did say this thing is extremely accurate, calibrated. Totally what I was going to do with it. Look at this. Eesh. Oh, this is beautiful, huh? Wow. Because he was using it to check things with. And I oh, man, it's like gorgeous. Yeah, this thing hasn't been really <laughs> used at all. I'll be putting this on the granite surface. Double check it, but... There's some patterns in it, but beautiful. Now I've got something I can tram with, guys. Well, I put it on my grade A granite plate with the Grice micro height gauge, and it comes in um, a half, a tenth of a thou. But every time I wipe this thing down, I'm getting dirt off of it. So that could be throwing it off. But if you think about it over the, yeah, look at the dirt. That's crazy. Over this long a distance to keep that kind of a tolerance, that is crazy. Yeah, this dirt could be two and a half a tenth real easy here. But even at that, I mean, for tramming a mill, come on, that, that's, jeez, it really is dirty. Eh, well, I ain't gonna rush, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna put it in with my, uh, in the drawer with, look at the dirt, tons of it. Put it in the drawer with the Pratt & Whitney set, gauge box set. Yeah, this probably is what's throwing it. But yeah, it's ringing on that uh, granite plate, I'll tell you that. Fourth side, 500 millimeter, $80. B, what a deal. It's really dirty. Wow, okay, well, I don't know what to do to <laughs> keep it clean. But it's gorgeous. There's some scratches and stuff in it, but yeah, they all have that. Does that come out anymore? Yeah, there's a bunch of junk coming out of it. Oh well, I'll mess with it off camera. So, I wonder, I bet you this sucker too, when you stand it up, it's probably parallel. I'm getting dirt all over it. Alright, next up, I've always loved Kodiak cutting tools. And I stumbled on eBay this set of center cutting coated end mills. Beautiful. From them. I think it was $60, 58 or something like that. And it goes from 10 thousandths, 20, 30, all the way up to 100 thousandths. So I'll probably wind up breaking the 10 thousandths one, but they are neat and they're in the drawer. So here's receiving the end mills. Kodiak cutting tools this was I think this was an e yeah this was eBay because it didn't say um, Amazon on it but Amazon does carry it um, I like Kodiak K-O-D-I-A-K -K. micro grain to give great finishes carbide and I figured well maybe I should get a very small <laughs> set I mean, you guys are gonna love this I'm surprised it's in this small a package but Oh, yeah. Where is it? Uh -huh. Yeah, great. The block is separate. I think this is US made. That's the block. Huh. 
Kind of a cheesy block. So the tools have to be hidden in here, all stuck in the tape. Right there. Nothing else in it. All right. And oh, they're in tubes. That's pretty cool. I like that because I don't want to. I don't have room in the drawer for this box. But these things are just like every size there is. Do they? Yeah, they should say on them. Um, they go up in ten. They start at ten thousandths and go up by ten. Diameter. This is fifty thou, forty thou, thirty, twenty. This is eighty, sixty. That's fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, eight thou. No, that's eighty. I've got two eighties. 90 and 100. Where's the 10? There was supposed to be a 10. Oh, this is the 10 right here. I'm messed up. 10. Okay, 80, 90, and 100. 10 thou. That's going to be ridiculous. You're going to break this thing, even though it's carbide. Oh, boy. Look at that. That is teeny. Mm. <laughs> wow. 20 thou and there's supposed to be center cutting holy gee you can't even see it good luck using one of these guys I don't know I bet you I'll snap it the first time extremely light cuts <laughs> wow yeah that's and it's pretty deep too that looks like it's almost a half inch long deep cut at uh, yeah, I think it's a 200, no, maybe 240 thousandth deep, one eighth shank, 40 thou, 50 thou should start looking like something serious, right? Yeah, now you're looking at something. If I can get it up in the camera, so you guys can see it, and it's like, wow. So, I'm not sure where I'm going to put this, in which drawer, this isn't going to get used. That would be fun though to see it. <laughs> All right, cool. So I've got that now in the shop. And last up, I've always been fascinated with magnetic chucks. I found a pretty small one that I could have put in the three inch vise, you know, make some bracket or something to clamp it down. So if I had to machine a piece of steel or something pretty funky, thin or something like that, I can do it. So, um, yeah, I'll show receiving it and then my review on it because it went back. So, hope you enjoy and see you next time. New toy that I just kept putting off and off. I like the UPS guy. Boy, this thing's got some weight to it. What is it? It's a magnetic chuck that I just keep putting off. So, they had a sale going. I was like, well, I just wanted to see what it was. Why not, you know? Ow. I think it was just under a hundred bucks for it and it should fit wow that's pretty cool looking <laughs> yeah yeah it does have some weight to it I'll tell you that oh man rusty cheesy that's terrible jeez um, whatever they're throwing in here that one's fine that one's rusted to death oh this is the allen I guess to make it work <laughs> if I can get it out of the box Jesus. <laughs> I knew it was going to be oily. Alright, well, wear gloves or not. Jeez, peach, huh? Pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh, it came with a back piece. It wasn't supposed to. It's a pretty bad cut. <laughs> Terrible cut, so I'm going to have to fix that up myself. Gee. Yeah, it comes with oil. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <clears throat> wow, dirty oil too. <laughs> uh, oi, jeez, I'm heavy. Yeah, I probably should have worn gloves, but okay, fine. Ow! And it's wiping the bottom down. Boy, is that well machined. That's 
was on a surface grinder. Yeah. Permanent magnetic chuck, huh? Okay. Oh, that comes off, huh? Okay. Throw this all in the trash can. Get another paper towel. I don't know why the grease is that dirty, but. So I'm hoping I can put it on some bar and then I can just easily clamp it in the vise when I need it. Oh, oh, the Allen is in here. Boy, giant Allen. Well, this looks fun, huh? <laughs> Where you put it in there. All right, so that should work, right? Huh. Let's see, on goes clockwise. Little arrows on this thing, huh? That's it. No. That's on. That didn't hold squat. I hope it's just that material. Let me get something else here. Uh, what do I have? Something here, huh? Uh, all aluminum. Give me a piece of steel, huh? Duh. Where? Here. Yeah, here's something. I guess. 1018. Yeah, okay. That isn't moving. Good. <laughs> Scared me. That material. These go in the trash can. That's terrible looking. Alright, so it'll be fun here. I gotta um, take this back piece off and straighten it out. So I got a magnetic chuck. What was it? Seven inches by four inches. So that should be good enough for the shop. Well, not too happy the more I look at this guy. It seems like, yeah, the box is pretty beat up here. Beat out on the side. Jeez. Because, um, you know, rust on one, that's pretty bad. But, you know, wire, wheel, or whatever, clean it up. But evidently, it slid into the side. Because there's some pretty heavy damage here in the side. Like it was dropped on those things or something. It's not, not nice at all. This guy, one side was like somebody just manually hacks out it off. It was at such an angle. No big deal. I've got a mill, so I've already kind of squared it up. But one side's like way longer than the other. Big deal, again. Um, <laughs> and I was looking at this edge. It's like this hole is hand filed. It's terrible. I was thinking, all right, yeah, I can go in there with an end mill and clean the whole hole up. No big if I could get it apart, but I just realized I can't take it apart because this is glued on both halves. And this is hand filed here. It's like they did put it on straight. It looks like it's straight, so I'm not sure why you'd have to file that off. But the one that really bugs me is the scratches in the top. There's one little one. One, two, three, four, five. These two you can't feel. This one's pretty deep. And I don't have a surface grinder to um, correct that with. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. 